Hey everybody, Austin, back again with another Let's Play video. Today, it's going to be Kakudo Chojin, or I think as they pronounce it in the game, uh, Kakudo Chojin, or something like that, uh, for the original Xbox. Um, this was actually a fighting game released back in 2003. It was widely panned by the press and gamers alike uh, when it came out. You know what? What's actually kind of funny about that, I actually kind of enjoyed this game. Now, now you know, don't get me wrong, it's not a great fighting game by any stretch of, stretch of the word, but the original Xbox actually had some worse fighting games, like Tao Fing. And, um, and once you actually learn how this, how this game operates, and you learn some of the cool things you can do with it that actually make the game kind of unique, it's a, it's a mildly entertaining fighting game. Um, if you're a big fighting game fan, you might want to give the game a try. It's not like it's expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, basically what I'm going to be doing is going into the practice mode, picking a character that I'm familiar with, and sort of explaining how they, the game operates. And then after that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the basic single player campaign or story mode, and we're going to go ahead and try to run through the game. This is actually the first time I've played this game in several years, and you know I've got my Xbox hooked up to my Elgato Game Capture HD now, um, so this is sort of like a test run for that as well. Normally I have the Xbox running through composite, but I've actually got it running through component right now with my HD capture box, which is actually going to be my, my primary capture box from here on out. I'm no longer going to be using my old uh, VCR to PC box by Ion because uh, I, I just recently found out my Elgato will take old analog signals, which it's like, why, should, why do I need two boxes when I have one that can do everything? So... Uh, we are recording this on my Elgato, so the picture quality should be a little bit better than um, what I normally got through my composite box. So, here we go. Title screens, go ahead and hit start. I actually have no audio in my ears right now, which is the one downside to my Elgato. And I'm going to actually need to get a uh, another monitor that has multiple HDMI inputs, or get an HDMI switch box. So, so I have no audio right now. So we're gonna leave all this stuff at uh, stock settings. The game really isn't that difficult. I mean theoretically I could probably put it on a higher skill mode but I want to make sure we actually get through the game for this video so you can kind of see what the the end is like which is nothing too special. Um, but yeah a lot of this stuff here these options are it's pretty bare-bones stuff. These are all your controls. Um, three of your main face buttons are your high, medium, and low attacks, so you basically will have high, medium, and low attacks. The B button, as you can see, is a combination of the three main attacks, uh, which you're going to actually be using a lot to do your special, I don't even know what they call the mode, but basically your character will turn blue for a few moments, and I'll explain how that works shortly. Uh, L, if you hold L, you can actually move around in all directions, and if you hold R, you can block Mortal Kombat style. Uh, much like other 3D fighting games, this game has a manual blocking system. And then the, the white and black buttons are also combinations of, of the other functions. So if you ever play this game, it is recommended to, uh, to try to experiment with all the button presses. I'm actually going to go back in here. If you notice here, it says 1, 2, 3, and 4P. Uh, this game can actually be four players, if I recall correctly. And uh, to access that, you go to the multiplayer option, but it actually doesn't allow you to go to the multiplayer option if you don't have multiple controllers connected. But uh, the multiplayer option is a little interesting because... Um, the multiplayer option is a little interesting uh, primarily because it puts all four players on this open plane and you guys just run around and just beat the, beat the Sensa uh, out of each other. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. I don't remember it ever being very fun. We're going to try Chojin mode now that I think about it. And uh, I don't remember it being very fun, but uh, it is there if you want to give it a shot. So, uh, yeah, we're basically in practice mode. Uh, my main character I play as is Reiji. Uh, Reiji. And um, he is a, a pretty solid character in this game. And one thing you'll find out about Kakuto Chojin is that some characters are very button mashy and others are not. And Reiji is one of the characters that is not. And he's always the character I've played as, and I think it's kind of why I like the game, uh, whereas other people don't. You have other characters where you can literally just keep mashing one button, and they'll do like an eight-string combo, whereas Reiji, if you keep mashing the same button, well, he does that combo, which is a solid combo. 
But uh, he's also got one, two, three combos, which you actually have to press different buttons. He can do punch, punch, uh, like that. He could do, he can end it with a low attack instead of, uh, instead of the higher punch, like this. And, uh, yeah. Uh, when you pick your characters, you've got Kakuto mode and you've got Chojin mode. And these are sort of mildly different fighting styles. For instance, in Kakuto mode, um, you can't just keep mashing the punch button like this. He, he only does two jabs with his high attack. He just punch, 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 and that's it. So just two punches. But in Chojin mode, they vary the moveset a little bit, and I can keep mashing the button, and he'll basically do four hits, like so. But he's got other moves, like if you do a quarter circle, quarter circle forward and the medium attack, uh, he'll basically do a nice lunging uppercut like that, and this is actually really useful for combinations and so forth. Like so. And, uh, you know, much like games like Tekken and whatnot, it's just have, this does have a basic juggling system, but it's not uh, nearly as flexible as what you find in Tekken. So, uh, yeah, just sort of try to get uh, familiar with the game again. He's got a backhand just by pressing back in the high attack, like so. Pretty useful. Um, one of the biggest things I wanted to show you, though, and I wanted to sort of explain this before we actually get into the main uh, gameplay section, session, is that if you press, if you hold block and press B, your character turns blue. And if you notice at the same time, the health bar actually went yellow completely. Um, and it charges back up with red, and once it's fully charged, you could do it again. Now you're probably saying, well, what does that do exactly? Well, it actually gives your characters slightly different properties for just a few split seconds. And uh, one of the coolest things you could do with it is some moves, if you're in the middle of an air juggle, like that, you notice the character fell to the ground. If you're in the middle of an air juggle and you do something like this, certain moves, like his lunge punch, which is his combo ender, will launch the character back up into the air when you're blue. So you can do another string and then potentially another string. Because again, you only have a couple seconds to do it until you go back to your normal color. But while you're blue, oops. While you're blue like this, again, you have a few moments to, say, pull out some really nice combo strings and juggles and whatnot. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. So if I uppercut him, not quite like that. If I uppercut him, turn blue, notice that I just juggled him a little bit and took a nice chunk of life away from him. Now, when your life bar is charging back up, it actually charges up faster if you continue to attack. So if I just turn blue like this, and if you look at the, my health bar, you notice it's charging up relatively slowly, like so. So let's let it charge up all the way. If I turn blue again, and then let it charge up, now if I keep punching, you notice it charges up a lot faster. So really, if you really want to get the most out of this game, you want to be turning blue as often as you can. You want to be using it all the time. Not all the time, you want to use it intelligently, obviously. Just turning blue and doing some attacks isn't going to help you much. But uh, it does alter the properties of moves. And essentially, you can, you know, pull out some really cool juggles. And that's what I, I, that's actually what I really like about this game. It's got a kind of unique, you know, uh, juggling system once you go into your special mode here so it's cool and you can do that with every single character in the game you can experiment with the different types of strings and whatnot um, and that's kind of what gives this game its depth it's not a lot of depth but it's more depth than I think some people actually probably gave it credit for back in the day so yeah there we go that's one thing I used to do back in the day is certain moves like that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do his uh, high, high medium attack or medium string and you turn blue, and if you tap them with his down, down punch, uh, down medium attack, basically, this little jab right here on the ground, uh, you notice if you do that right after doing this string, you notice they fall to the ground, and you have a split moment to actually hit them. And usually it works best when you're up against a wall. Which didn't work that time. No, too slow. 
But you get the, you get the general idea. If I had if I turn blue right at the right second, use my down jab attack, they'll just fly back up in the air, and I can just continue the string. So a lot of damage potential in this game. Man, I forgot how good the graphics are in this game. This is a uh, you know relatively early Xbox game. Um, and the graphics still hold up pretty well in this game. You notice the characters are really shiny, and that looks kind of, you know, fake nowadays, but when it came out, it looked really, really solid. And one of the cool things about this game were the lighting effects. Like, you've got the, the glow effect up there in that spot lamp. Uh, you got the snow and whatnot. You sort of have, like, a reflective sheen on the ground, uh, which you didn't see uh, in a lot of original Xbox games. This one really kind of showcased uh, the original Xboxes uh, graphical capabilities and you'll notice that even more on uh, other stages as we play and I forgot uh, we're in practice mode so you can actually you know put your special gauge at infinite you know have the AI do different things and whatnot so it's a good way to practice so let's go back to the title screen and go ahead and get on with the rest of this video so again we're gonna go ahead and pick Reiji and uh, You've got multiple outfits and stuff like that. Uh, and again, the fighting styles. I'm going to just leave it at Chojin mode. Uh, I think Chojin mode, for the most part, is the better mode to play. Um, because your characters seem to have more moves. But it's the sort of thing where you'd want to experiment and, you know, try out different characters. Try Kakuto and try Chojin mode and see what happens. So now this is a really big hulking character we're going to be fighting, and if I recall correctly, I don't think you can actually uppercut him. He's so heavy. So, if let me try it. Even if I can... Yeah, he doesn't even launch, so it's not good. But if he... Well, see, I don't even think I can make him fall down. He's so large. Um, that was a special attack. If you press B... It basically presses high, medium, and low at the same time. And if your health meter is completely red, you'll basically do an unblockable attack, kind of like in Tekken. They, I don't think they can block it anyway. I'm pretty sure it's unblockable. But those attacks usually leave you wide open. And much like Tekken, you can try to play kind of, kind of pokey. Like, you want to poke here and there. And the AI especially seems to have a hard time with that. I really wish I could hear this game right now, because uh, one of my favorite aspects about Kakuto Chojin, and this was probably the biggest reason why I really enjoyed the game back in the day, and <laughs> if these qualities weren't here, I would probably not have enjoyed the game at all. But the soundtrack, the soundtrack in this game, if you're into electronic dance music and industrial and rock um i th honestly think this has one of the best video game soundtracks ever made for those styles uh the guy that did the soundtrack did a phenomenal job and that is pretty much the game's saving grace is the soundtrack if this game did not have an amazing soundtrack it would be really really hard to recommend it i mean the the fighting system itself not horrible there's worse than the original xbox like in tao feng uh, that, that was just awful. But, um... Yeah, the soundtrack in this game is just, just great. So... I forgot, Reiji actually has different stances he can go into. I never really found them particularly useful, but I didn't really mess around with them that much. It was just that I can get through the game just using the, his standard moveset without going into, like, his different stances and stuff like that. Uh, when he goes into stances, it's also... he's also a little slow. So, he's a little slow when he goes into his stances, which is kind of like, you know, like in Tekken, I prefer just to, you know, sort of poke my way around at my enemies really quickly and rapidly. So, jab, 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 like so. Fast attacks. Um, in higher level Tekken play, especially Tekken Tag, Tekken Forward Up, uh, it was mostly about the jabs and things like that. You wanted to poke at your enemies quickly, so you didn't want to leave yourself open by just throwing out slow attacks and things like that. And in order to not leave yourself open, you throw a lot of jabs, you do a lot of down, down plus punch attacks, down one as they call it, and you basically poke at your, your opposition. And uh, so I kind of like to play Kakuto Chojin the same way, you know, like that. There we go. 
And much like a game like Tekken, you can sort of poke at them and make them block and then throw them. So I need to be turning blue more often, and I believe the CPU is pretty... You know, they, they run into your launch uppercuts a lot, so, you know... Ah, there's that move. I was wondering where it was. You know, it's been a really long time since I played this game, and, uh, you know, I used to play it a lot back in 2003 and uh, 2004. But, uh, there's still some attacks I, I don't quite recall. So... And now that I'm doing this live, I'm, I'm actually having a hard time remembering my moves, because I, I, I didn't really practice it much before doing this video. I practiced it for like five minutes just to re-familiarize myself with that special juggle combo system. And, um... So, yeah. Oh, we beat that guy already? That was two rounds? Felt like one round. <laughs> so we're probably already about... Uh, I don't know, maybe halfway through the game. I think we go through, I think we play through all characters, or fight all characters, but, uh... I forgot I'm in Chojin mode, so I can just do that, you know, four-hit string. I try to mix things up a little bit, so, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll do my one, two, three combo, but end it uh, mid. Um, and then I'll do it again, but I'll end it low. And then I'll do it again, but I'll just keep it completely high by just using my main uh, high punch attacks to, to do the four hit combo. And uh, so let's get some juggles going, just like that. Look at that, that's some nice damage right there. So, yeah, it's not a combo system that is just wildly deep. It's not like Tekken where there's even more flexibility just due to how, you know, the juggling works. Uh, and it's not like Virtue of the Virtue Fighter series where your juggles are very technical. But, uh, you know, it does have a little bit going for it, which is, is pretty cool. The polish is what I've always enjoyed about Kakuto Chojin. To me, it was it's definitely a game that's style over substance. Uh, but it's good style. I like the character designs, for the most part, and, um, the music is great, for sure. I mean, not everyone's gonna like the music in this game, but, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, darker, edgier, electronic music, um, industrial, and of course, you know, rock and stuff like that. And the game soundtrack just meshes all that together, uh, for a very high inner high energy package and now what's actually kind of funny is when this game came out um, it was withdrawn from store shells uh, pretty early on in its lifespan I think it was only like a couple of months it was out and then it was just pulled completely and <laughs> the reason they pulled it um, is apparently in one of the music tracks, I don't know if it was this track right here, I thought it was for this character, Asad, but I could be wrong, where it's like, there are some lyrics in it, in like a totally different language, I don't even think it's in English, where it's like, bashing some religious text or something, or it's just talking about something that would probably be really offensive to uh, a, a certain religion, or followers of a certain religion, and... So the game was pulled from store shelves by Microsoft's will. They they uh, went ahead and pulled it, and um, so yeah, for a long time it was you know amongst like collectors and stuff. It was thought that this game was going to be made uh, pretty rare. It was going to be like hard to find, uh, but that was actually never the case. I think for a little while, uh, it still costs you like twenty or thirty bucks to get a used copy of this game. But nowadays, it's like a six dollar game if you want a complete copy. So even though it got withdrawn from shelves, nobody wanted it still. I mean, it got really bad reviews when it- I'm telling you, it got- I think it probably got worse reviews than Tao Feng. I think Tao Feng was probably rated okay, and this game was just, like, crapped on. And, um... Which is actually kind of funny, because I, I honestly feel... As a more technical fighting game player, anyway, I feel that this was a, a better effort than Tao Feng. It's a bare-bones effort, but it is an effort. That's a combo right there. That's what I'm talking about. Um, 
it's definitely more fun in my opinion because again i i actually used to play uh tekken uh, i'd say competitively i mean locally i never went out i never drove very far for tournaments and stuff but i did play in some tournaments locally and we had a very nice little dedicated scene at our, one of our local Namco arcades. And of course, it was a Namco arcade, so we would get all the new Tekken releases. Uh, granted, I did start a little late. I started with Tekken 4 right when it came out, which was about 2001, mid-2001. Um, and then I, uh, I got actually went backwards. I went to Tekken Tag after that because that's where a lot of people were playing. Um, because Tekken 4 was like 75 cents and they had lowered the value or lowered the cost on Tekken Tag to like a quarter. So everyone was still lined up on Tekken Tag because it was cheap and especially the good players could just play all day without really spending much money at all. And so I ended up playing Tekken Tag for years, uh, learned it inside and out, at least in terms of my own characters I used to play as, like Julia and, and Jin and Yoshimitsu, and uh, there was a couple other characters, Lee, I would play as. And uh, But I got very technical with those characters, learned the, the juggle system, played so much with other people, I, you know, I just, I knew the game very well. And then Tekken 5 came out, and that was... A big deal for us. A lot of us were really into Tekken 5 for the first year or so. Um, but then that's when the, our local Namco arcades were really starting to go downhill. They were starting to close up, close shop. And then that was pretty much the end of that, mid 2000s, you know, 2005, 2006 or so. And uh, we did get uh, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection when it came out as well, which was the expansion basically for Tekken 5. It had some extra new characters and whatnot. It was probably just an add-on for the original board set. I don't, I don't know how they did that. I don't know if it was like an actual brand new board, but uh, yeah, we did get that upgrade, which was pretty cool. But yeah, so I, I definitely uh, played a lot of uh, Tekken and whatnot, and definitely loved that game. I was really, really into more competitive fighting games back then. Um, Never did get to make it to Evo or anything like that, because I was always just too stuck in my job and work. I never took off vacation. Never even had that much money, to be honest with you. I spent it all on video games back then, which I kind of regret, because now I do other things that are competitive, but it's a little bit different. I do competitive pinball, as some of you guys know. And I'm moving up the ranks on that, which is, which is great. And I'm going to other places. I'm traveling which I didn't do before when I was younger in the competitive fighting game scene. So, the best players in the competitive fighting game scene would travel, you know. You weren't the best and just played local. Unless you were at... Unless you had an absolutely amazing local scene, like the guys up at Chinatown Fair where I think... Uh, up in, I think it was New York where Justin Wong plays and... or played, past tense, because I think the place closed down a long, long time ago. But, you know, our local fighting game scene was mostly rele relegated to people's houses because we didn't have that many arcades. We just had Namco run arcades. And the Namco run arcades were great for Tekken, but not much else. Um, so. Hope you enjoyed that story. <laughs> I'm having to come up with like uh, different topics and stuff just off the fly because uh, I, I can't hear the music. <laughs> it's weirding me out. Like I want to hear the music in this game because it's got such a great soundtrack. Like this is a great like upbeat, not really upbeat but fast, like more like traditional like breakbeat tune from uh, the early 2000s and it's just got... The soundtrack is still amazing today. It's just very, very detailed, very well done, very energetic. And as you can see, some of the, this AI just is not, you know, cutting it. They're just... I think back in the day when I would play this game, I would put it on, like, the hardest skill mode and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure I finished it on the hardest mode. Of course, like, right as I say that, the AI is still <laughs> starting to kick my ass. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that wasn't good. I saw that coming out. I was like, oh, I should have ran. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that was an unblockable attack. Round three. Fight. But they really like to fall for my uppercut. Just like that. Oh, I didn't get it. 
You know, speaking of Tekken and stuff like that, I always meant to do a Tekken 4 Let's Play because, again, that was the first Tekken I played and it was the first one I was really familiar with. Um, I actually bought a Japanese PlayStation 2 back in 2001. You know, granted, the PlayStation 2 had only been out for a year and a half. Not even a year and a half. Well, yeah, year and a half by that point in Japan. Um, a little over a year and a half, actually. And the American PS2 had only been out for just a little over a year by that point. And so Japanese systems were still a little expensive. And But uh, I was working at Starland at the time. I had just gotten a job. And the owner gave me a discount. Hey, it's Brad Pitt. The owner uh, gave me a discount on the Japanese PlayStation 2 with a bunch of games uh, at the time, which was great. And so, at the end of 2001, around Christmas time, I actually got a Japanese PlayStation 2. And the reason I did that was because Tekken 4, the Japanese version, was coming out just a few months down from then, or a few months uh, away from then. It was like March, February or March, um, 2002 when it came out. It came out uh, a good six to eight months before the American release, which is why I wanted to get the Japanese PlayStation 2. And so I did, and I got Tekken 4 when it came out, and once I got the game and I could practice it at my house, my skills really improved at that game. Um, because while I had played fighting games and, and stuff like that prior to that, I had never really played them competitively. I played them with my local neighborhood friends. I, I didn't really ever have access to an arcade when I was a kid. I had access to an arcade, actually, don't get me wrong, when I was like a kid kid, literally like 10 years old, but, you know... But I didn't have access to an arcade really until I got my my car and my license around I guess I was 18 or 19. It was basically right at the end of high school when I got my license as a kid or a late teen. So you know I really had no way to go to an arcade because by that point at the end of high school we didn't have any arcades around us. It was just you had to go the next town over, which was like 20 or 30 a 20 or 30 minute drive. So. But uh, yeah, I bought a Japanese PS2 for Tekken 4. Um, and basically the whole point of that whole spiel and story was that um, I, I wanted to do a Tekken 4 Let's Play. I actually did a Tekken Tag Let's Play not too long ago. Um, in the last year or so, actually. Actually, now it, it's been a little while. <laughs> so... Um, but Tekken 4, I've always liked Tekken 4. It actually has a similar graphical style to this game. And if I recall correctly, I thought some ex-Tekken developers actually worked on this game. I don't remember. And I thought maybe that explained the uh, sort of Tekken-style visuals. I could have sworn uh, one of the guys that worked on one of the Tekken games worked on this game. I was close one there. I think this might actually be the second and last stage. Um, we're on stage 11. I think there's only 12 characters in the game, to be honest with you. And um, we're on stage 11, so this might be the last round. And then we're basically at the final boss, uh, which is not a playable character by default. I think you can play as the final boss with a code, or by doing something crazy like beating the game twice with every character or something crazy like that. Uh, the game does save uh, your progress in a way, as far as like, uh, you know, how many times you finished it, or at least, uh, you know, have you beaten it twice with every character or something like that. So. Now this game's actually got a pretty gritty story if you're into that sort of thing. Like, this guy right here I think like murdered your family or something like that, or like, Took a knife across, like, your back or your chest or something, so you got scars all over you, and... It's actually pretty gruesome and kind of, uh... Yeah, probably not for the squeamish. Like, you can see all the scars on him. And... Uh, you actually can, can find that stuff out by reading the instruction manual. You know, back in the day when manuals actually existed and had a purpose to them. Um... Doesn't even feel like it was that long ago. But, uh, yeah, so game's got a kind of a crazy story, and I don't remember what the story is about this chick, but, uh, 
Yeah, she sort of has a bunch of different moves taken from other characters. She's almost kind of like Doral or Doral in, um, you know, Virtue of Fighter in a way. I think that's how she operates. I should be throwing more often because the the AI sort have uh, sort of sort of falls for it. To be honest with you. But, uh... <laughs> come on. There you go. It's like, touch it, touch it. No, no, no. <laughs> come on, touch it. <laughs> touch it. Damn. Um... <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, she turned back around. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen uh, the AI do that before. One more hit or so. Throw! There we go. Dead. So, there you have it, guys. That is Kakuto Chojin for the original Xbox. Let me skip through that. And uh, it's basically going to show a very brief ending. It's not very long at all. It's just pretty much a full motion video sequence that talks about it. But what's cool about these endings, if you watch the video clips, um, it basically shows you combos you can do by turning your character blue. And that's actually how I sort of found out about the blue effect changing uh, the stuff. So there you go, there's the combo video, and that's how I learned that. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. And again, like I explained in the very beginning of the, of the video, it's I always thought that was pretty cool. And they'll show you that for every character in the game to give you an idea of, you know, the things you can do uh, with each character. I should have mentioned, we're playing the Japanese version, and, um, you know, the Japanese version doesn't really go for much either. It's pretty cheap, uh, but it's basically the exact same game. Most of it's in English. Oh, actually, pretty much all of it's uh, in English. And, um, yeah. So, we are playing the Japanese version, which explains some of the Japanese text and whatnot. But uh, there you have it, guys. Kakuto Chojin. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this Let's Play. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, this game's not very expensive. If you want to give it a try, it's, like I said, it's mildly entertaining. It's fun to actually just goof around in practice mode and try the different combo strings by turning your character blue and coming up with, you know, decent damaging strings, which, as you saw in this play session, I use quite a lot of. Um, and uh, the game isn't nearly as bad as people really made it out to be when it came out and it's kind of a shame because yeah the game could have been better but it also wasn't that bad either you know I, I'd say it's probably it's average I mean it's got great visuals I mean the visuals even still look pretty decent today and it's got a phenomenal soundtrack uh, and it's got some decent gameplay to be had it's not all bad and obviously it's not fan fantastic it's, it's not a phenomenal game but, uh, eh, for $6, if you want to weaken the kill, uh, you could totally kill it with this game, especially if you have some friends to play it with and whatnot. Uh, so, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up here. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back with some other Let's Plays soon. Uh, if you like what you see here and you're new to my channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I've got lots of Let's Plays on the way. And uh, if you go back to my main channel page, you can see playlists full of prior Let's Plays as well as long plays and other reviews and so forth. So definitely check out what else I've got. For everyone else, I'll see you soon. And until then, take care.